Q&A Friday. All right, so viewer Agent404, a frequent commenter on Go Small Live Large, asks a great question. Please make a video on Harvest Host Stay. Very interesting. So Agent 404, it's a great program. Uh, it's an annual fee. It's like 50 bucks a year to get access to the database. And why it is so amazing is that uh, you typically stay in places for free, places like uh, farms, wineries, um, breweries perhaps. Um, today I'm in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and one of the uh, Harvest Host locations is a museum. I'll spin around here so you guys can see this. Uh, this is the Texas Air Museum, and what's really cool about it is it's located literally next to the municipal airport, um, which is really cool. So I've been watching uh, uh, you know, Cessna-style planes come and go all day, and even more cool is that it is right next to, and here comes in, I special ordered this for you guys, a helicopter coming in. Um, this is the San Antonio Police Department uh, helipad for their two uh, helicopters. They've been very busy all day. And if you can swing around here and see these bad boys, this is the um, a couple of old warbirds that are parked out here. Let's look at this real quick. He's just landing, right? Look at that. Like that. So again, what I found really really fascinating about Harvest Foes is I found really uh, fascinating about Harvest Host is, in addition to really cool places, they're usually in urban environments, which uh, makes for really cool things to do and see and takes me to places I wouldn't normally go to. And look at that sunset behind us. Oh my gosh. Um, so Harvest Host, uh, this is what the website looks like. I would encourage you, if you are uh, into boondocking, you do have to be self-contained. So the Travado is a uh, natural for this. Uh, my neighbors over here, they're self-contained in, uh, in their trailer. So you do need to be self-contained. There's typically no power at all, no water, no sewer, so you're totally on your own. But uh, it is a great program. Um, if it's a winery or something like that, they generally kind of expect you to uh, maybe buy a bottle of wine or something like that. And, you know, Who's not gonna enjoy that, right? Um, all you do is simply phone up and um, make a reservation. Just see if they have space for you. This uh, site allows for a couple of folks. Um, here you can see my neighbors quick. They're having dinner. And I've mentioned before that they um, uh, have added golf courses lately. Um, I think there's an upcharge for that. I think it's $79 for the year. But the cool thing about golf courses is that they are in really nice neighborhoods. Uh, they're really kind of on the on the pl plush side of, of boondocking in um, really cool settings and uh, uh, really quiet nights because they're usually done at 7 uh, p.m. So it's a really quiet night. All right, next question comes from a uh, frequent commenter and questioner, Henry. Henry. He says that I've seen other RVers use a pop-up table that is hinged on the side of the cabinetry in the entryway. Um, this allows more prep space. Um, so Henry, you are exactly right. And the Travado, the 2019 model year, is equipped with this right here. And this is a an extension to the, the countertop. So the way this works, it's hinged, and you'll hear it snap into place. And this is a beautiful thing because it literally expands this countertop. Let's take a measurement. The standard measurement for the counter is uh, we'll call it a functional 40 inches. The extension is 13. So do the math. And we're looking at about 53 inches of functional space. Um, I use this a lot um, when I'm cooking because if you're cooking with the, the gas, all of a sudden this space is not available. So this becomes premium real estate here. Um, and certainly if you have this thing up, which I typically am not using until I'm washing, that'd be the sink. Um, so this is really, really good space here excuse me guys <clears throat> the other thing i love to use this space for is if i'm working here <clears throat> and i will do the table extension you guys know how this works right swings up from underneath so if i'm working and i got my big mantra here laptop and my ipad maybe a meal um i use this for like crazy things like my, my phone or coffee or something like that just to kind of free up the space so it really gives a lot of useful space here the other thing i found that if if i'm using this seating position here so i'm typing mantra here or just typing and looking up watching tv this space becomes really really useful for 
holding coffee, phones, something off to the side here so I'm not reaching around, excuse me, reaching around the monitor of my laptop. So it again extends the surface, uh, work surface a significant amount. Um, I'm really glad Winnebago include this as a standard option in 2019. Great question, Henry. The other thing I've used it for is a tripod holder. Watch this. Oh, cool, huh? And next question. Next question comes from Deb Young. Deb Young, thank you for being a frequent commenter and question asker. Deb. Um, she asks, uh, I've heard some complaints with the height of the bed. Can you demonstrate getting in and out of the bed? And um, you know me and my measuring tape, so let's, uh, let's do some measurements and see what that looks like. So from the floor to the top of the mattress, let's, uh, let's call it 34 inches. Yeah, let's go 35. Let's call it 35. So by comparison, the uh, kitchen galley counter is 38 inches. So to put that in some degree of perspective, the height of the uh, jump seat here is, is 26 inches, 25 inches. So it's, it's a significant step. So what I do on my when I get into bed is is lift up on my kind of push up on my my tippy toes, and then that puts one knee under the bed. Here, let me show you that. So it works just like that. Uh, I'm fairly nimble, not a gymnast by any stretch of the imagination, but I really don't have too many problems getting in and out. If you get down, you lose a little tricep action to kind of break the to break the descent. Um, some people um, use the step of the shower pan. That's certainly a three, four inch rise. Let's measure that. So the rise of the shower pan is uh, it's five inches. I'm not sure I would call that a best practice because you're putting weight on a plastic surface that I'm not sure it's meant to hold that weight. So I wouldn't really encourage that. Um, now maybe if you keep a little step stool under the galley or something like that, um, or a fold up something or other, um, make it a little easier. If you just had an extra, you know, four or five inches, that would be all you need. But really, it's 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 not that big a deal, <clears throat> at least for me. So, great question, Dan. Right, so the next question comes from viewer Yellow Zapdos Eats. Yellow Z. Um, ask, can you show us how to use the galley to cook a meal in the future, in a future video? Yes, I will do that. That's a great, great idea. I'm not going to do that tonight, but you, um, you do make mention of, of the audience's reaction to last time I made coffee. Um, I have good news. I've upgraded my coffee. Let me show you. All right. And due to, due to audience peer pressure, I have upgraded my coffee. You may remember that I was using... Uh, Taster's Choice came in the plastic bucket because uh, it was Costco. Um, it was like 12 bucks, and I really didn't know any better. So, because the channel sort of shamed me into trying something different, um, I tried this. This is Cafe Bustello. It's really good. Have you guys tried this? Um, way better than Taster's Choice. And what I'm doing to get rid of the glass. Um, because it's you know because these things could, can fall out is I've actually put the coffee into the taster's choice jar and uh, that's working really really well so thank you for all of your concern about my coffee habits um, because I want to please the audience I have now improved my coffee probably not to the degree some would like but significant upgrade thank you for that all right so the last question of the night will be done in the Travada restroom. This, so this comes from audience member Steven Stringer, and uh, his is really kind of around restroom black tanks, and hence me hanging out in the restroom, which is huge, you guys, gals. This, this bathroom, I can't tell you how fantastic this thing is. At a little expense to bed space, this is the most functional B-class bathroom I have yet to see. Um, I shower in this thing almost daily, unless the shower draining and ventilation. And Stephen, I'm going to have a uh, video coming out this week. Um, I think on Monday, um, actually showing how to shower in the Travado, and you will see me in my wet skin um, using the shower. So stay tuned for that. Uh, ventilation, that is not a problem. 
Um, there is a, right above me, a vent. Watch this, guys. Well, I'll grab this. So right above the uh, commode here is you press the lever to open the vent, and you press the little green, or you press the little red button to start the fan. And that bad boy is really good at sucking out the smells and the humidity, let me tell you. It is super efficient. And it acts as a mini skylight. During the day, it actually illuminates this room a tad bit. Let me put this back there. Thank you for your patience on that. So uh, no issues on ventilation. Uh, Steven uh, Stringer continues. And is, are there issues with the gray and black tank dumping? I need to do a how-to on that. I, my whole thing on that has evolved. And uh, issues, no. Um, you do have to use a macerator pump to drain the gray. Um, that may be a, uh, kind of a bummer which means you can't really hook the city water and just have the water flow through the system. You fill the tank and you empty the tank for the gray. Um, black is um, weirdly not a problem at all for me. I have had no smells, no grossness. Uh, I'm using the hose that came with the Travato, which is short. I think it's like 10 feet. Um, but as long as you can get close enough to the sewer you know, drain hole thing, um, it dumps in just literally a, a minute or two. And then you do the gray next. It kind of washes out the uh, the the hose itself, and then you f go on to um, ask about flushing the black tank. And that's one great thing about the Travato 59G floor plan is that, and I think the K does too, um, have the Santee flush uh, system built in, which is where you connect the fresh water to the uh, exterior, and it uh, puts water through into the uh, black tank and flushes it out, kind of rinses it out inside with fresh water. Um, Winnebago recommends that about every three or four um, dumps, which is what I do, and then you run it for uh, two or three minutes um, to make sure it's good and clean. Let's see, he continues on. Uh, TP, holy cow guys, don't use residential TP. Use the, and, and the Travato G has uh, TP holder one here, I also keep my little moist wipes, and it also has TP holder two, yeah, number two here. So you can actually get a four pack in these two spots. Um, again, do not use residential toilet paper. Um, the reason why RV TP is special because it breaks down really fast and and disintegrates. So yeah, you need to use the special TP, and it's about three dollars for a four pack so way more expensive than typical TP but when you're driving around a hundred and ten thousand dollar rig what's a buck or two extra for a TP right Steven continues on regarding the uh, tank sizes and that is a B thing certainly on the uh, lithium system equipped Travato um, the battery uh, size uh, energy pack is at the expense of the storage tanks but I've been five almost six days certainly five and a half days uh, urban camping in St. Augustine, Florida with a single freshwater fill and a single uh, gray and black tank fill. And uh, again, I, I was using the facilities. I was showering at Planet Fitness, but I was using the commode for number one and number two for that entire period, uh, about 90% of the time. Five days, I was using this commode, five days, one person to fill that tank. So I was pretty impressed with that. Um, and then uh, Stephen has one last question air circulation in the bed area. So let's take a look at that. It's called that bedroom air circulation. So what I found is if I leave the window, depending on the weather, um, so what I have right here is I have this bug screen down and the window, this is the awning style window. So it's all the way out. So if I'm feeling secure about the location and the weather is appropriate, I actually leave the window open and just close the bug screen. If I'm wanting a little privacy, I just make that go like that, and that really improves the, the circulation. I also turn on the ceiling fan to uh, exhaust the air out. Um, if the weather is cool, what I do is I bring this down and just leave it ajar a little bit, or if I am uncertain of the surroundings, again, one of the great things about this is there's um, a locking position here where the window is ajar. Uh, so you just lock this, but it's still open about three-eighths of an inch. So you can't get in, and then I do the same thing. Privacy, and then airflow. And uh, you can adjust that to your desire. So, so the other thing I've done is I've put a little um, fan here. I got this off of Amazon. Suction cups on with this sticky ring. 
Um, it does not stick to this stuff, but it does stick really well to this stuff. And the fan runs off 12 volt, so it's, I've got it plugged into the 12 volt uh, socket inside the cupboard. All right, that was a fun uh, Q&A Friday uh, making video for you guys. I uh, hope you got something out of that. Really appreciate you tuning in. Um, as always, this is uh, really about you and how I can help you get uh, uh, the right decision made on your RV and get out of your comfort zones to um, achieve more of your life goals that you want to uh, achieve. Um, really appreciate you um, liking, that'd be giving it a thumb up. Um, subscribing if you haven't subscribed. Uh, we're doing a lot more content now on travel, uh, some really cool interviews, um, and uh, the places we're going are just really um, over the top. I'm learning so much and I'm sharing that with you guys. Um, share um, if you have no somebody that is looking to purchase an RV. Um, hopefully the content that uh, I'm making is helping them make their decision. And uh, if you haven't checked out my website uh, lately, uh, please do that. Uh, I have my travel itinerary posted there. Um, thank you for everybody that voted for the name of my Travado. Her name now is Lily. So thank you for that. Um, connect with me on social media. Um, I'm on Instagram. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging in there. And uh, until we meet again, I wish you to journey on. And with the with the max air fan Whoa, up there you are able to uh to get uh the air pulled out so here's something else i've done is i put a <coughs> sorry guys this is a different shooting position for me all right <coughs> whoa there goes the camera holy cow all right, not a great tripod here. Sorry, guys. <laughs>